much. My name is Femi Akinde. I'm the CEO of Slim Trader. Um, Slim Trader is a software as a service company. My background prior to Slim Trader is in technology. I worked at um, T Mobile, then Microsoft, before starting Slim Trader. In between, I took a short break to go to business school at the University of Chicago. Being able to have uh, my significant other makes it possible for me to do this. So I'd say my biggest accomplishment is finding a spouse that is understanding of what I do and is extremely supportive of that. So that, I would say, would be my biggest personal accomplishment. My biggest professional accomplishment would be um, being able to have a team that makes an idea that was born of necessity what it is today. So I guess being able to surround, being the ability to have that team that makes this happen. The payment industry today is experiencing a revolution, I would say. There is a lot of innovation around ease of payment, about what it costs to do electronic payment, about making multiple sectors adopt payment or electronic payment. So it's, I, I would say it's in, the payment industry today is going to see a whole lot more changes than we've ever seen in the past, because I think a lot of folks are realizing that this is, this could actually, this could transform the economy. The more we can, the more payment becomes electronic, the less, the, the more you can have a transactional history, the more you can have access to credit, and it builds on from there. So I would say we're at the early stages of what would be a revolution of sorts for the payment industry. So Slim Trader is a software as a service company, and our goal is threefold. Make software accessible, make software affordable, and digitize operations in as many verticals as possible that need that. Our primary target audience are businesses. So businesses, uh, they typically businesses in this part of the world struggle to afford the enterprise software they would need to automate their operations. So that's where Slim Trader comes in. Slim Trader provides them a more affordable, easy to use enterprise software platform that they can now digitize their operations with. So when you have enterprise software, especially in a transactional setting, obviously one thing that you need to have with that will be payment. So we've always looked at payment as being the, how you close out a transaction we facilitate. So it's very essential for us to have very good relationships with the payment providers in this, part, in, in this country and outside this country. Uh, then the flips, so the, our biggest accomplishment as a software as a service company so far, if you remember I said we make software accessible, affordable and we digitize operations. The biggest thing, uh, first big accomplishment is the fact that we made buying an airplane ticket accessible to consumers of the airlines on the mobile phone. Before we came along, that was something that didn't, that wasn't there. So what we did was we, our platform, we put our platform in place to interface between the airlines and their consumers, thereby making it possible for consumers of airlines to go to the airline on their mobile phone, have a mobile friendly experience to search, select and buy uh, plane tickets, get the confirmation, uh, booking confirmation on email and so on. So it took them away from having to go always to a PC to do such a thing. In this part of the world you would note that mobile devices are the in thing. So businesses struggle to have their goods and services accessible from mobile devices. So our platform has helped most verticals transition from being solely accessible on a PC to being accessible across multiple mobile devices. 
So that's, that's so our biggest accomplishment, our first big accomplishment is that. Uh, our second big accomplishment is in digitizing operations for hotels. Before we came along, hotels relied on very expensive enterprise software from overseas. So not a lot of them, 90%, 99% of them were cut, uh, were cut out from that. They couldn't, they didn't have, they wouldn't, it wasn't affordable, it wasn't usable for them. But when we came along, we introduced, uh, we extended our platform to hotels and it digitized operations for them. So uh, instead of a hotel having to write your name in a ledger when you come in, uh, having to uh, use an Excel spreadsheet to record you checking into the hotel, us extending our software as a service platform to hotels made it possible for hotels to, using any device whatsoever, access uh, a reservation engine that we provide, create a reservation for the hotel if the hotel is walking in. And once that reservation is generated, it can then be sent to a payment device. So you would think of it, you would think of it as a digital point of sale, which is the ability to create a reservation and then to send it to um, a, a card terminal for the consumer to pay. That's something that also didn't exist before we came along. So I would say that's one of our big contributions to the payment space, uh, interfacing payment with our platform so it's seamless you um, making a reservation and paying for it all in one go. The third thing I would say we consider a big accomplishment is we have recently launched uh, a food and beverage app for the phone. And what this does, it, it enables restaurants, the UBA, if you're a restaurant in a hotel or a standalone restaurant, it enables you to go away from pen and paper when you're taking orders from guests or generating orders. So instead, the phone now becomes your invoicing tool. And with the phone, you can go through and make a reservation or, sorry, take a guest order and send it to the kitchen all through the phone. And when the guest is ready and they want to close out their bill, you can present them with a digital invoice, which allows them to pick a tip if they want, not pick a tip if they don't want. And then they can either charge that back to their room. Um, like I said before, I think we're at the start of a revolution in, pay, in the payment space. And I think it's all about ease of use, right? Um, in our business, payment is the final phase. So right now we give people two options. Either you pay while you're in the middle of a transaction or you choose to pay on premise. So one of the things that I see in future for payment in this space is the ease at which folks will be able to pay from their account in a, at a check on an online checkout. So there are a number of companies that, are, that have been formed around that principle of why don't I just pay you from my bank account? So that's, I think, something that's unique here. Um, I think it will also lend itself to a wallet type company where I can store all my possible sources of payment and then I can pick whichever one I want. Uh, PayPal is here, but I'm not sure PayPal is positioned to serve this part of the world as well. So I think there's, a, there's room for local companies to come up and fulfill that wallet style, multiple sources of payment at checkout and I can pay that. But it all revolves around ease of use and cost. If uh, I, I see the opportunities in creating greater ease of use, and I see the opportunities in creating smaller fees with the payment methods. And I think those are the key things because for us, we find that our business grows when we're able to access this kind of innovations in payment. And so we're looking forward to seeing what payment companies will introduce in the future. Uh, my younger self, I would, I would have started this earlier. I think a lot of what I did, I did because the, we didn't, I didn't have a lot of role models to fall back on when it came to entrepreneurship. So I figured I had to be, 
had to have a lot of corporate experience before I started out. Uh, jury's still out on if that's good or bad. But I would say I would have started earlier. Possibly I'd have maybe gone to business school and or maybe gone to business school a lot earlier and then started a lot earlier. Uh, I think because it's something uh, I would say starting earlier, starting this a lot earlier would be what I would tell my younger self. As in don't worry about failing so much. The more you fail, the more you learn. So failure, so I think there was a lot of fear Growing up culturally, failure wasn't tolerated. So I had to go overseas to, to learn that failure is part of success. Uh, growing up, failure was something that we, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but it wasn't something we grew up, it wasn't acceptable to fail. So it made you rather cautious. So my younger self, I would say, one, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have broadened my horizons a lot more. Uh, come to accept that failure is a part of success. So I'd have started a lot sooner. Five years from now, uh, I want to be running a Pan-African company. So we need to, be, so expansion is big for us. So I would want to see a Pan-African company being run or with country CEOs or country managers from the team we have right now. So expansion is big for us. We would like to see local support for what we do in different geographies across Africa. Our main focus is Sub-Saharan Africa, so expansion is big for us. So five years from now, I see myself running a Pan-African organization.